bikes come in all different shapes, sizes, and travels. And it's this last one that got me thinking. Does the amount of travel you have make a difference? The short answer then is yes, of course it does. Choosing the right type of bike and the amount of travel for the style of riding you do can make a huge difference to both ride characteristic, quality, and of course, smile factor. Now, that's not to say that you can't hit any type of trail on any traveled bike. In fact, doing this is really fun. It can actually get pretty wild, but sometimes you can get in a little over your head. So choosing the right amount of travel is absolutely key. So before we head out onto the trails good and proper, let's take a look at some typical traveled bikes. First up, let's start with the 100 to 120 mil travel range. This is an XC down country marathon, call it what you like bike. Typically, bikes with travel around this range are designed for long periods in the saddle. The full sus takes the sting out of things and newer bikes with modern geometry make these kinds of bike travel combos more capable than ever. 130 to 140 mil travel now and we're firmly into trail bike territory here. A bike with this travel is gonna be built to take on most things the trails can throw at them. Generally, sporting a little more travel up front to absorb any impact and the slightly larger amount of travel means big hits get eaten up. You'll notice bikes will start to become much slacker and sturdier, meaning they don't shy away from the gnarly trails. 150 to 170 mil travel now when we're in enduro bike territory, the burliest of bikes with the travel to match. This range is typically designed to be able to handle anything you can throw at it on the way down, but still have the platform to be able to winch yourself back up. What does all this mean then? Does travel really make a difference? Well, there's only one real way to find out and that's to head onto the tracks. So I've chosen a bit of trail that's pretty indicative of what a lot of us would ride. So how are we gonna quantify the differences in the amounts of travel on the bikes? And well, we're gonna look at a few different factors, including ride quality. We're gonna discuss about comfort and we're gonna time it with the old Garmin here as well, because I actually reckon it's gonna be fairly tight on times. But with that then, let's head to the top of the trail. The 120 mil bike first up then. Let's drop in and see how she feels at the end. See you tomorrow. God. Okay, right, that was a rowdy but very fun run. So, what's it like doing 120 mil travel down that trail? Well, it was really fun to start with. So the smile factor is huge. On the peddlier, pumpier stuff along the bottom, the efficiency less travel bobbing and bouncing away meant that I could uh, really put the power transfer through and it made it quite fun. On the more down early stuff higher up, it did get pretty rowdy, sort of, you could notice that the, the travel essentially couldn't quite handle the bigger hits. Having said that, you back off the speed of touch and it's really fun. Now, when it comes to time, we're gonna have to wait till the end to find out. So, on to the next bike. Okay, the bikes are swapped, so it's now time for the 130, 140 mil trail bike. How do you think it's gonna fare against the 120 we just had down the track? Let me know in the comments down below, but it's time to drop in and free. Two, one, bye. That was a considerably wilder ride. So this is the 130, 140 mil travel. And it's a bit of a game changer. It's felt very different for obvious reasons. 
you know, more travel, especially at the front, taking those uh, impacts as you drop into sections. Now, obviously, it's a trail bike, so there are slightly different characteristics to it, which also contributed to that. But it was really fun. You could actually push a lot harder. The speed was slightly higher. But I got to say, the 120 mil had that kind of raw factor to it. You were on the bitter, bitter edge. Is that saying it is now? As for time, well, again, we need to knock out one more bike and catch up at the end. Okay, people, it's third and final bike time. 160, 170 mil. Is this going to make a huge difference? There's only one way to find out. We'll see you at the bottom. Third and final one done. Let's find somewhere quiet to have a catch up. There we go then, the results are in and the runs are done and some very interesting findings actually. But first, let's talk about sort of how it felt, how the bikes actually rode with their varying amounts of travel. So the 120 mil first, now obviously a very lively ride on the piece of trail that I've chosen. And I thought it would be pretty good actually because it's obviously got a great mixture of rough roots, rocky down illness, and then it flattens out and is really pumpy at the bottom, which is where I thought the shorter, more efficient travel setup would come in. And do you know what? It actually was a lot of fun to ride. It was more than capable of getting down it, so it made for a great ride. The trail bike next, now the jack of all trades, the Swiss army knife of the bike world, you might say. And you know what, it was a little bit quicker. I'll tell you times in a mo, but it proved to be a lot comfier as well. And because of this, I also had a lot of fun on it. It handled the rough stuff with ease and also was actually pretty efficient along the bottom where the pumping and the pedaling really did come into it. Because it was a slightly longer travel, that meant that sort of bumped up the comfort, if you like, but it wasn't so long that I was bogging and wallowing away. So it actually felt really, really good. And the time reflected this then. Let's people talk about the big boy, the 160, 170 mil of travel. Now I was a bit nervous here because when I dropped in, I knew that it was gonna go well on the top half. That top half of the track is very much rougher downhill territory. So I thought big travel, that's its perfect territory. It's gonna absolutely gobble it up with ease. And then I was dreading the bottom where it's so pumpy and so, you know, big compressions and getting on the gas. I was like, this thing's gonna be a bit of a dog. It's just, is it too much travel? Let's talk results then, people. Now, there's obviously a ton of variables that can affect this, so do take it with a pinch of salt. Things like geometry and tyres, they change on all the bikes. But the 120 mil, that did it in a stonkin 1 minute and 12. Our 130, 140 trail bike got down there in an astonishing 1 minute and 6. And the big dog, the 160, 170 mil enduro bike, absolutely blew them out of the water with a 1 minute flat, proving that actually more is not necessarily worse, especially on a varied trail like this, which really surprised me. Now, it got me thinking though, should I do the same experiment but on the same bike? Maybe my trail bike, jack it up on travel and shrink it down. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, but I'm out of here. Thank you very much for watching everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure and I'll see you next time.